Imagine in your mind's eye, if you will, a honey badger. Strong, free, majestic. Now imagine it has much longer, more golden fur with almost a metallic sheen to it. And when you look down to its feet, it has eight of them, and each one ends in a razor-sharp claw. Now imagine this creature is about double its size, and subsists on a diet primarily made up of golden ore, and of course the meat from those creatures who hold it. That will give you the briefest glimpse of what we have in store today. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Monster of the Week, the show where we dig up old creatures from D&D's history and bring them to light for use in your current 5th edition game. My name is Josiah, also known as Dungeon Dad, and today we're going way back to AD&D for a creature created by the one and only Gary Gygax. The Orum Vorax is a combination between a badger and a fox with a significant size difference and a bit of a golden colored coat. These creatures hold the special place in the hearts of many DMs and players alike who have been playing the game for quite some time. Their name of course comes from the Latin words Orum meaning gold and Vorax meaning someone who is voracious. And they truly live up to their namesake in the most offensive way possible because these guys consume gold, copper, and other precious metals. It's no wonder that among the dwarven communities, these creatures have been nicknamed the Golden Gorger. Now, like I said, this creature originally comes to us from AD&D, but there is also a version from the Pathfinder RPG as well. And many people don't know this, but it actually had a third edition printing in the module Expedition to the Ruins of Greyhawk. And that's the only place this creature appears in any version of D&D beyond AD&D. But because we don't have a version in 5th edition yet, and because I personally think these creatures are a great addition to any bestiary, I'm going to go over today what they can do in battle, just exactly how you might want to use them in your game, and I've also made one little change that I think your players will love. If you are interested in using this creature in your game, I've included the stat block in the description below, but for now, make sure you put your gold in that bag of holding, because it is time for... Now these creatures are small in size, both in the sense of the word and literally for mechanical purposes in D&D, although they are not to be trifled with. They are CR8 creatures, which they certainly do not look like it at a first glance. Beneath that cutesy facade, if not snarling appearance, there lies an absolute savage monster. They have an incredibly keen sense of smell, which helps them pick up intruders in and around their burrow, and also allows them to pick up the distinct scent of gold. If they smell gold on a creature, it enables them to go into a frenzy, and they can dash as a bonus action. So adventurers laden with loot poking around in places they shouldn't be, beware. When it comes to offense, they are fairly simple, if not brutally effective. They have a pretty powerful bite attack that clamps down, and they will not let go until either their opponent or themselves have been killed. And if they hit with their bite, it's an automatic grapple. Once they've bitten down, they're going to continue biting and slashing furiously with all of their claws. And as you can imagine, a creature with eight legs, each ending with a razor sharp claw, is going to get several attacks. In addition to their bite attack, they get four claw attacks every round that do a significant chunk of damage, and they have potential to crit on a 19 or a 20. Meaning that instead of the usual 5% chance, there's a 10% chance for them to double their claw damage. This is also meant to imply that their claws are extremely sharp, so it's much easier for them to cut into all those vital parts of any other creature. And that pretty much sums up their combat ability. They are simple, but brutally effective. One other thing worth mentioning is they do have a burrow speed, so it's possible for them to use that to either ambush their prey or circumvent some of their attacks if things start to get a little too crazy even for them. But as I mentioned, there is one thing I changed about this creature, so let's take a look at some. And this change isn't to the creature itself, but is sort of a fluff detail that might help flesh out your world a little bit. I added an optional rule for you to essentially allow your players to skin these creatures. If they can successfully roll their survival checks, they can get the pelt of an Orum Vorax, which when taken to a blacksmith, because it does have certain metallic elements to it, can be worked into a sort of cloak called a Cloak of the Orum Vorax, which is a new magical item you might want to include in your game. This cloak essentially acts as a shield, which would allow the character using it to two-hand their weapon or use two weapons while also receiving the AC benefit of having a shield, and flavor-wise it kind of acts as this metallic sheet that shimmers golden on their back 
and they can kind of turn and use it to swat away attacks and that kind of thing. It's just a little bonus rule, but I thought this was a cool item, and it gives you a chance to add something extra on top of this creature as to why they might be so valuable or sought after, and why someone might be paying the party to go hunt one down for them, which, speaking of that, brings me to my next point. Now similar to last week's creature, the Shocker Lizard, these guys can be a simple addition to your world in the form of a type of fauna. Maybe the players interact with them, maybe they don't, but it's just something to make your world feel a bit more alive and new magical creatures to populate it. But if you want to give them a bit more of an involved role, you could make it the pet of some kind of NPC, whether an enemy or ally, it could make for an interesting companion if they were able to tame an Orm Vorax. Now it is explicitly stated in the entry for this creature that they are nearly impossible to tame. But, if you can manage to get your hand on some pups that are still underdeveloped and growing up, it's possible to train them if you get them young enough. Now this of course would make the pups extremely valuable, because just think of who might want a creature like this, a creature that can act as a pretty viable line of defense, but also literally smell gold. I imagine some kind of dwarvish prospector or miner would be very interested in having a companion animal that could literally sniff out veins of gold in the mountain. And for that matter, these creatures are bound to be living wherever there is gold, so you could use one as a random encounter in some kind of mine dungeon, maybe an abandoned mine shaft the players are exploring, or maybe the Dwarvish Prospector is actually paying the players to go and kill the Orm Voraxes that have kind of invaded his mine. And if they do take that quest, then as I mentioned before, maybe they get a side objective of bringing back some of the pups so they can be trained to help the dwarves rather than hinder them. Or I could see one of these creatures being a great companion animal or even just essentially a tool to a crime lord running some kind of syndicate in the Undercity. It would serve them well to have a creature that can literally smell the difference between fake and real currency. They could tell the difference between which coins were shaved not using real gold or some kind of combination of gold and some other lesser metal and real true gold. Or maybe you introduce the players to a tribe of barbarians living in the mountains that have some kind of ascension ritual where their young teenagers essentially go out and they have to slay an Orm Vorax and bring back the corpse. And then that corpse turns into a cloak which they then wear proudly as a leader among their community. Could be an interesting world building opportunity and would give the players a chance to interact with a new group of people as well as maybe earn the right to hunt for a cloak of their own. The Orum Vorax, whether you have a nostalgic connection to it or this is the first time you're hearing of the Golden Gorger, is a great addition to the game and I think it has many uses and it also fills that niche of a high-ish level CR creature that is in fact just a beast that lives in the wilds. If you've ever had this creature used in a game that you've played in as a monster you've encountered, definitely leave a comment with your story below, or if you've got an idea for how you would like to use this in your game, definitely tell us about that too, because you guys always come up with awesome ideas and I look forward to reading them every week. And also, as I mentioned previously, if you do want to use this monster, you can find the stat block in the description below. It's just a Google document that contains everything you need to run this creature. But if you are one of my lovely patrons, or you're interested in supporting me on Patreon, on the Patreon page, you can find the kind of monster manual style Photoshop stat block that I've made there, which you can download at any time. And as always, if you do like what I do here and you want to support the channel, leave a like, subscribe, it helps me out more than you know. But most importantly, thank you ever so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Also, if you do have any recommendations for monsters you'd like to see covered, uh, drop me a line on Twitter or leave a comment below or hit me up on the Discord. I'm always building the list of monster suggestions and it's pretty large, but I've always got room for more. So anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Till then.